Hey, everybody. It's uh, Wade Lightheart here. We're just getting ready to come up to the top of the hour. If you uh, do get on the call, uh, please feel free to announce yourself, where you're from, and uh, we're happy to have you on board tonight for a truly global call. I'm coming at you from Panama City, Panama. Uh, and uh, we have Siha in Bellingham, Washington, and Creel in Vancouver. Hey, guys. Want to say hi to the team? Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for jumping on the call once again. I uh, hope you're all doing a fantastic evening. Yeah, so uh, we're not going to waste too much time. Uh, we'd like to be punctual. We'd like to be fast. We'd like to be furious. So we're coming up at 7 p.m. So if we, you guys ready to get started? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Excited okay, about. great. So uh, welcome to uh, our regular Monday night PH Alliance webinar. That's Prosperity and Health Alliance Business with a Heart. I'm your host, Wade T. Lightheart, and I'm joined here with superstar businessman Siha Top from Bellingham, Washington, and Creel Hutchison from Vancouver, another Zamner business guy. And we are pumped, pumped, because we're in week seven of this whole project. We started this project as a little whim to see what was going to happen if we could connect with the team because it was growing so fast, so furious, and so big. And guess what? It's exploded. It's gotten bigger than we imagined. We're going to make it a regular thing. The feedback's growing, but more importantly, is people that are applying these principles that these gentlemen are going to share with you tonight are going to change your life. They're going to change your life financially. We know the water changes you physically, but I think also as you apply this, there's going to be a deep emotional psychological change, and that's about becoming empowered, about being able to unplug yourself from the system and plug yourself into a system of empowerment. So instead of you know getting depowered and getting depressed, we're getting, you know, plugged in and impressed. You know, that's what's going on. Guys, do you want to add a little bit before we get going? Go ahead. Sure. Um, but yeah, just following up with that, Wade, I, I think what we've seen in the last six weeks since we started this is people plugging in. They might not be on the live call, but they're plugging in during the week and getting lots of great feedback. And um, I, I'm telling my leaders, you know, when you're plugging people into the system, you know, you, you've got only so many hours in your day, so how do you do things that are duplicatable? And if you realize, as someone watching this call, that you are in the um, business of building a large team, you want to make sure you're plugging your people into the call, into the webinars, so that it's going to do a percentage of the work for you. And that's the key for me. I, the, the question I ask is, is it duplicatable? Is it scalable? And uh, so it's so great to have these because I'm rolling them out, you know, um, to the rest of the team at a distance. People that are sleeping right now will wake up and see the, the recorded call of this. So we're putting the, the global inside of our global business, and it's, it's so happy to be here. So true. For me, myself, uh, and the team, we're still on all-out massive action uh, every day. Every day I'm on the phone, literally I wake up, and I'm on the phone with five, six people before noontime spending my time and connecting with you all and getting your feedback on, on what we've been doing and how that's inspired you. I know that uh, Kareel, Wade, and myself have, have received emails from, from teammates wanting to connect to, you know, uh, outside and helping as well. And, and we'd love to do that, but you know, our schedules get really full. But what's, what's really nice is seeing that feedback and that people are getting inspired and they are on this 90-day all-out massive action because that is what builds our business, period is when everybody's on the same page and everybody's doing the same things and we're here to give you this, the, the fundamentals. But what, what's exciting for me is the all-out massive action. I'm, I never forgot, I don't think you guys as well, um, and I hope our team remembers that, you know, why did we start this uh, at the beginning of November, or excuse me, uh, September? It's because we, co we were committed. We are committed to your success. We're committed to our business for the next 90 days, whatever it takes, whatever we need to do. So I'm excited about seeing all the feedback on and all, uh, what we've been able to inspire people. So um, let's continue with this all-out massive action together. So uh, I can't wait for the show. I'm excited. Excellent. Me too, guys. And you know, one of the great things is people kind of look at and they, they look at you guys and they say, "Hey, well, well, how is it that they're so successful? You know, different backgrounds, different personalities, but there's one thing that I can say about both of these gentlemen." and why they're successful. And that goes for virtually all of the people who are at the top of the pay scale in Enagic is they have a practice, they have a system, and they work the system consistently daily and get that going. And in order to do that, there's a couple of things. Tonight's webinar, we are going to focus on a couple of different things. We're going to work on kind of getting 
asking you some specific questions to help you kind of discover where you're at and how to get to the next level, but we're also going to give you the specific how to get your business on track and how to track it in a way that allows you to see where you need help because sometimes we don't know what we don't know, we don't know where we're at, but we're going to eliminate all that and take away all the guesswork and bring it on. So without any further ado, I'm going to jump right in here and start uh, laying this down because we have a lot to talk about. First thing is, uh, we, we talked about this last week, reviewing the five areas of performance. If you remember, I just clicked back to last week, we got productivity. The questions you're going to ask yourself, and you can go back to the other webinars if you want to see this, is am I being strategic or responsive? Are you starting your day taking action to build your business, or are you responding to what's happening? You always want to be strategically taking action to move yourself forward, as opposed to just be responsive. You've got to be responsive, but be strategic and aggressive first. Second, persuasion. How is your skills of persuasion? Are you persuasive? Is that an area you need work on? If you need that, talk to your upline, get some with some of the tools that we have. Psychology. Psychology is big. What's my self-view? Your self-view is going to determine your income. Your self-view is going to determine your results, and it's going to determine how, you're persua how persuasive you are. And believe me, we all need to work on this. Physiology. How am I managing my energy? Am I all over the place? Do I not have enough energy? Am I focused? Am I, uh, am I distracted? Um, you know, am, I, am I doing the deal? Am I doing my water? And purpose, what's my why? When you get this clear, if your why makes you cry, then you are on top of things. And that's, you need to have an emotional reason why, a, a real reason, and believe in that reason, and, and put that reason in front of you every single day. And that allows you to grow. So moving on to that, we're going to talk about there's seven arenas in your life. Okay, there's seven basic arenas, and I'm going to encourage you to get out a pen and paper if you don't have it. You want to get it out right now, and you want to ask yourself some questions that's going to come out. So basically, we're going to talk about health, friends, love, finances, mission, hobby, and spirituality. These are the seven arenas of life that we want to investigate. And what we want you to do is just rate yourself out of 10 on each one. You're not going to share this with anybody. This is for you. But if you want to be a high performer, if you want to have truly the awesome life that we're talking about, that we're living and that we're you know, putting out there for people to embrace, you want to be a seven on each of these if you want to live fully charged. And so let's, let's talk about that for a second. Let's, let, let's, let, let's look at that. So rate yourself you know, on health. How's your health right now? Is it good? Is it okay? Have you had a checkup in the last year? You know. Um, where is your health? Are you exercising? Are you not doing any of that stuff? We've got some exercise programs of fitness things that can take 15 minutes a day. Uh, we want to be a product of the product. Are you drinking the water? Okay, um, That sort of stuff. This is just a no-brainer, but people forget. Sometimes they get so busy they forget about your health. Don't get so busy you forget about your health. Friends. Now, one of the big things is, you know, friends is a big one. Sometimes people start out with you know they, they they get their friends involved or some of their friends involved or some of their friends don't get involved are you still maintaining those relationships um, you know I remember with Seahaw when we first started up he, he made a massive change in lifestyle and he still retained his friends that aren't on the program they're coming in at some point in the future he didn't spend as much time with them as maybe he did before but he still kept friends kept the relationship going because you never know what's going to happen down the line um, are you investing time in your friends love how about that special person in your life, the partner in your life, the person that you're, your, your, your romantic self? Are you investing time? You know, the thing is here, you don't want to lose sight of the, the, the benefits of what the business brings, but that comes down to time management. And are you spending time in your love life? Are you loving your life? And what are the areas that you need to work on? Are you taking time? Are you incorporating the business as a vision to build towards you and your partner? I know that's some things that uh, Creole and Seahaw have integrated very deeply. Very, very impressive how they manage that. And you can talk to some of the strategies one-on-one -on -one or personally with them. Finances. This is another big one. Are you managing your business like a business? Do you know how much money you're putting into your business? Do you know what your return on your investment is? Do you know what your time investment is? This will get you clear about some of the tough decisions that you have to make in any business. And what's interesting, when you compare the Enagic business from return on investment, uh, there's really nothing quite like it. There's really nothing like it. Mission. What's your mission? Are you on a mission? You know, are, are, are you sharing the water as your mission, as part of your mission? Is it something 
that you, you're, you're on a crusade, on a cause. Because when you get a cause, when you're on a crusade, there's a different energy for it. So is it, do you want to help 100 families get on this water? What does that do for the economy? What does that do for the emotional well-being? What does that do for the physical well-being? When you start thinking about some people say, well, I don't know about this. Well, if you go 6A, that means 100 families got on this water. What would that be? What, uh, the average family of, what, three, four people? So that's three or 400 people's lives that you can change. What a great mission, right? The other thing is, is uh, the development of a hobby. Sometimes, and this, this is an area that I struggled with, is not practicing a hobby, not having something where, you know, that I had a way to break out of it. Some people like to take up golf. Uh, if you have a social hobby, that's great. If you're an extrovert, you probably want something social. If you're an introvert, you probably want something that you just do for yourself. Maybe it's painting. Maybe it's, you know, something that you, you work on in your own time. Um, and the final thing is spirituality. We're in a heart-based business, and one of the things I think that's great about Mr. Oshiro is his spiritual nature. And spiritual transcends religion. If you look at all the great religions, they all say the great thing. Be kind, you know, be loving, tell the truth, do good things. Practice the spiritual principles in your business the values that have held this company together for over 40 years, and people kind of pick up on that, and people will vibrate with that spiritual nature. I'm not saying you've got to be religious or telling people you've got to be a certain way, but understand that this is a bigger mission than just making money. It's a bigger mission than just sharing water. There's, there's a connection, there's a community, there's a, a unity, a oneness that happens inside of an adjunct that's really, really special. And it can be really something. And you know, maybe you want to take your spirituality personal. I like to meditate. I go to a special meditation group. And you know, that's a great thing. It kind of leads us to the next things. What's your primary reasons? You know, people talk about productivity and things in psychology and all those things. You need to understand there's a couple things that you need to develop. And one is desire. How bad do you want it? And so I'm going to say, well, I don't want it that bad. And you know what I really find is when people tell me that, I find that it's not that they don't want it bad, it's that they don't believe that they can have it. They've been beaten down by life. They've been told they weren't good enough. Maybe they were in a bad relationship. Maybe they're in a bad financial situation. Maybe they made some mistakes. Maybe they failed at everything in their life. You know, but here's the thing, you know, you can do this. Anybody can do this. Anybody can learn this. Anybody can see this. And and I think this is one of the greatest self development programs there is. And you gotta realize that if you have enough desire you can, desire will help you learn the skills. Desire will pull you through the uncomfortable parts. Desire will allow you to go through the late stages where you're not competent, where it sucks, where you're, where you're struggling. If you want it bad enough, you'll get there. We have some people that have a lot of desire and little skill, and I've seen them rise up and develop the skills they need, right? And I've seen people with great skills with not enough desire, they can go anywhere. So you want to fire up the desire and whatever that takes for you, right? Again, it goes back to your why. Second, what is your command? Um, what I mean by that is, are you self-reliant? Do you have determination? Are you saying to yourself on a daily basis, I can figure this out. I don't know this right now, but I can figure this out. As soon as you give yourself the I can figure this out command, guess what? You open up the doors in your mind to allow you to achieve things that you never thought possible. I mean, think of Mr. Oshiro. He came to this country. He didn't speak a word of English. He didn't have anything going on. But guess what? He's built a billion dollar business by sharing the value, the principles, the opportunity. And you can too. If he can do it, we can do it, right? Secondary reasons. When you're looking at the areas of your life, right, that maybe aren't so high, if you go back to your rating system of those seven areas, what is the attention you're giving yourself in that area? Pretty much, you'll always notice that there's, if you're not putting a lot of attention, the score seems to be low. If you're not getting, and we're, you know, I know Creel's going to talk about some of these a little bit later about tracking your business, and this is about where is your attention, right? Second, we're going to talk about the effect. What is your emotional connection and commitment? Are you committed? Are you emotionally? Are you too emotional? Are you taking this personally? Are you getting all crazy about it when someone says no? Okay, this is a numbers game. You know, you know, are you coming in at a balanced level? Ask yourself these questions and you want to get with us or ask questions at the end to, to say what are some strategies that you know? Because we've all had to direct this. And action. This one as as Siha was talking about, action over perfection. 
you know, and massive action trumps a little bit of action. See how much action you take in that area. I mean, most people don't think about this, but one of my worst all-time least involved demos ever was the one I first gave for Seahawk. Okay, it was terrible. I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel like it, but you know what? I just took enough. Back. I just took action, and guess what? That spelt a lot of fun and a lot of families' lives changed because I did I, I did it even when I didn't want to. I took it when I didn't want to. So let's let's look at this chart, okay? And you guys can draw this out. And this is very, very important. Right over here, if you look on what I'm, I'm pointing here, this is where you are today. And here's your goal for you know a lot of people that's 6823, um, maybe it's above, maybe it's getting to six day. What I do is you want to start at the big goal first. So let's say that's two three. Well what do you need to get to two three? You need a 6A22. What do you get a 6A22? Well, you need to be a 6A2, then you need to be a 6A, then you need to be a 5A, a 4A, a 3A, a 2A, a 1A, all the way down that chart. So you can plug this in. You can even put little points along the line of where you want to be and what time you want to be there by. Set yourself some goals. Put some pressure. If you don't make that time, that's okay. You just recalculate. Better to you, you shouldn't be hitting all your goals. If you're not hit, if you're hitting all your goals, you're not setting the bar high enough. Okay, you're hitting your goals every week. That, that that's too much. You, you you're not pushing yourself. Okay, so let's talk about this. I call this the intention line. Okay, and this is some info that you know I was learning at Brendan Burchard. He lays it out very well. I, I'm a big believer in Brendan Burchard stuff. So you got to realize that if you're not producing the results you want here in the intention line, there's a couple things going on. One. You know, you've got to acknowledge, number one, that you're not producing the results that you want. And that's your responsibility, not your uplines, not your downlines, not your spouse, not your dog, not your cat, not your lifestyle, not your locations, none of those things. You've got to take responsibility and acknowledge, I'm in charge. I can figure this out. Number two, you need to address what it is that you need to figure out. Maybe you don't know. Maybe if you don't know, that's okay. That's what your uplines for. You say, hey, you know what? See how Wade, whoever you know, is 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 in your organization. I don't know where I'm at. I don't I don't know what's going on. That's a great place to be. But I want to figure this out. I got the desire to be better. Second, you've got to put your attention on the skill or the action step. Maybe you have the skill, you're not taking the action. You've got to put your attention on the challenge. You need to focus like a laser. That's what's going to, you know, get this going. And you know, I, I'm really excited for tonight what the guys are going to share with you guys. Great. And finally, you need the discipline to do it. You need to get discipline, and we all need to get discipline. And you know what? Uh, a lot of people used to say, "Well, Wade, you have so much discipline from bodybuilding." You know, and I always say, "Discipline didn't come to me from bodybuilding because I was disciplined. Discipline came because I was so clear about my goal and so focused on my goal. I was willing to do whatever it takes." I was willing to learn whatever skill. People don't realize it took me 10 years to win my first bodybuilding show, 16 years to win my first national championship. Once I did it then, I won all the time after that, but it took that long to learn the skills. It's worth it. Now, what happens to people? They get hooked in avoidance. They avoid doing the things that they need to do. They start putting the blame on their upline. They start putting the blame on their group. They start putting the blame on the water. They avoid everything but taking responsibility. Okay? They don't address things. Okay? Number two, they get distracted. They get on Facebook. By the way, if you if you started your workday responding to emails, guess what? You're losing 27% of your day. 27% of you open your email box in an hour, in the first hour of your work. You need to be focused on what you're doing, set your goals, do your health program, do your health program, drink your water, all that and start moving in the way you want to go. And finally, the key to solving this whole thing is to go at it head on, to learn to, when you start learning and applying what you learn, this gives you confidence. And I've seen it so many times, people were struggling and not going, and you know, they come see me, we hang out for an hour, we get them on the phone, we, get a, we, we, we do the 25 texts like we talk about in week one, and they get, all of a sudden they got four or five appointments, and they've got to go do the demo themselves. They've never done one. And by the end of the week, they've done two or three demos. And they come back pumped and excited going, oh, my God, I can do the demo. I'm in control of my business. And that gives you confidence. 
right? Remember, we want those 100 demos. The sooner you get 100 demos, the better off you are. Finally, back here, remember, here's the thing. Avoidance and distraction. These are the enemies. Don't kid yourself. Avoiding what you need to do or getting distracted from what you need to do, these will kill you. But I'll tell you what, discipline crushes these. And discipline comes from having a clear goal, from being on a mission, from seeing the vision and rocking and rolling it. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're no good at the demo right now. It doesn't matter if you don't, you're not a bio, you know, biological expert. You don't need to be. We got videos, we got actions, you got texts, we got webinars, we got everything that you need. It's just just take massive action. So speaking of massive action, I'm gonna turn it over to you know the master of massive action. We'll go back to the guys here. We got Siha and Creel. Um, I call them action and focus. That's the two guys right there. You know, you know, Siha's the master of action and Creel's the master of focus. You put them together and boom, you have a great business. So guys, take it away. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Um, you did an amazing PowerPoint presentation there. It laid it out very clear for all of us to see and all of us to follow. Uh, I thank you for going to all those trainings because that's time, money, effort, equity. It, you put into it. So like you said, you know, it, it, it comes with time and you did it and you're now you're sharing, you're teaching with us. Everything that you, you've uh, taught there, I agree 100%. I try to practice it myself. Um, so thank you for that. I'm not, I, I, I'm going to talk about, you know, taking action daily because action is one of the most important things. With no action, there's nothing happens, you know. Actions are stronger than word, words and I truly believe in those and I also believe in that it starts with you inside and out and that's what you were talking about you know your actions come from your inside and it comes with your out you, I totally agree with you get focused know what you want go for that goal every successful person in business in, in anything they know where they are going to end up uh, dead or alive you know they know that they're going to end up there you and I we know where we're, where we're going to be Creel I know we've spoken we know where we want to take our teams uh, so get laser focused like you're sharing uh, with us we need to dig deep inside and ask ourselves, you know, what is it that we want out of this lifetime? We have one life to live. Um, we have one breath that will never take this breath again. We'll never get this moment back again. So make the most of it. So I try to practice that, and that helps me get uh, get going in, in the action that I have to take every day. Why is it important to me? Everything that I'm doing right now, why is it important to me? And then why is it important to the people around me? you know, of, of what my goals are, what my dreams are, uh, and when I do accomplish it, when I will accomplish it, what will that, what, how will I feel, you know, how will my family feel, how will my friends feel, you know, um, are they going to be happy for me, am I going to be able to help them more, uh, are we going to be putting ourselves in a better life position, those are, again, those come from the inside, and you have to get to know yourself, this is part, a huge part of personal development, uh, is taking action, um, for me, learning to take action because I'm a procrastinator. Uh, I'm a procrastinator because I like to do the easiest things first. I've had to train myself like we all had. Sometimes you have to do the hardest things first. And then when you do it so often, it becomes easy and it becomes rewarding because we get to check it off of our checkoff list. For me to train, or I, how I trained myself, and I want to share with you guys, because this is what this, this, this whole webinar trainings are, uh, uh, are for you guys, is how we did it. You know, and, and we're just giving you certain, certain ways. There's so many systems out there to follow, but you're going to have to take a look at all of them and decide which is best for you, which is going to work for you. And, some, and if you're a leader, not just what's going to work for you, but what's going to work for your teammate. I, I, I may be going to all these trainings just like Creel and Wade and, and all the other leaders are, and we take bits and pieces to give back to the person, the, 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 the teammate that we feel is best for you. So um, for me to learn how to take action better, one of the first mentors that I've had that taught me to take action back in 2008 when I fell from the highest point of my life to the lowest point of my life, uh, it was Tony Robbins, and I'll never forget it. Um, he taught and he still teaches, and we're just there, we saw him in Las Vegas, uh, in a moment, in a decision uh, that you make will be your future, you know, so, in a, so he, taught, he teaches taking action, every action it, it leads to a result, every action leads to, to your future, and you know, when I was at my lowest point in my life, 
I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where up was. I didn't know where down was. I didn't know where left or right was. It was like the bubbles. If you you know jumped into the pool and you see bubbles going everywhere, they say you know direction. Just look which way the bubbles are going. That's up, right? Well, Tony Tony Robbins was there for me. He said he was my bubbles. He the, and what he shared with me and taught me was uh, make a decision now. Stick with it, you know, because that's going to be your future. Another mentor you love, we all love, is Brendan Burchard. You know, you went down his five steps. I saw that. If you, did, you know, Wade explained it, he's got it right there for you. But if you want to hear it directly from Brendan Burchard or want to share it with your teams, I recommend just going to YouTube, look up Brendan Burchard. You'll see the, the steps there. Just send that one link uh, of Brendan Burchard. It, it's absolutely amazing. It does the teaching for you, it, and it helps your, your teammates take action. Another one of my favorite mentors that really helps me uh, take action is Robin Sharma. Uh, Robin Sharma, he, he talks about beating procrastination. What is procrastination? It's fear. You know, it's getting over the fear. And like Wade said, it's just becoming confident with what you have and your belief, and then you're, you're committed to it. So Robin Sharma does an, an excellent job of training on how to beat procrastination because that's what keeps a lot of us from taking action. So um, guys. You know, learn from the best, learn from the mentors. They've got it all laid out for us. Wade, you've laid it out for us. Creel is going to give us the fundamentals, you know, uh, on it. So I'm going to hand it off to Creel right here with, you know, take action. Take massive action and you'll see your business grow. Creel? Awesome. Thanks, Iha. Um, I'm going to load up my PowerPoint here. Uh, Wade, can you see that on your end, my PowerPoint? Uh, so far, not. How about that? There we go. Now I can I see, see it. it. Great. Um, okay, everybody. For me in the past, what's really been um, a missing point is me actually tracking my action. Because some days I feel like I've done a lot, but in reality, the activity that I've done has not been um, producing results. And this was something that really drove home uh, when I went to GoPro and Eric Worre stuff this year. You know, I took a couple gems from different people, and one of the gems I took away was um, every successful business knows their numbers. And I can honestly say at times I have not known what the heck is going on in my business. Checks are showing up. I've got, I'm, I'm talking to some people, but there's activity happening that I'm unaware of. And then there's, I think there's some activity happening that isn't happening. So I'm kind of out of touch with my business and that was a scary position for me. I'm like, I have no idea. I'm relying on something, but I'm actually not tracking it. So um, I took it upon myself to um, create something that you know can be shared amongst our team so that we can actually track our activity because the reality is the numbers just don't lie. So understanding if your business is growing or declining uh, allows for owners to increase certain activities or course correct declining trends. This is really important. If you think you're doing great, but your trends has been down for the last three months, there's something wrong in your organization. And if you don't catch it by month six, seven, or eight, you could be a sitting duck, you know, and, and you're in some trouble. So your network marketing business, our Nagic business is the exact same thing. We need to know the numbers. So here's the benefits. You know where the growth is, and then you can track why, what activities are happening there, who's happening there, um, so that you really know where to focus and how to um, escalate that activity. Also, you know where things are declining and why. Perhaps something new has been introduced. Perhaps um, you know you uh, people are are doing the presentation in a certain way that's maybe not working. You start to realize and see where the growth is, where the decline is. You can start to check in and see what's happening. You know, and this is for a new person starting, we're going to talk about it at a different level, but these bigger activities is really, if you're a leader in this, if you're a, a 4A, 5A, 6A and above, wouldn't it be awesome to have accurate numbers of everybody in your organization handed into you monthly? That's where, that's where I'm going with this. You know, accurate coaching can exist when you know what is actually happening. There's no surprises and it creates stability in your organization, stability in your business, which then gives you more freedom in your life. So here's what I've come up with with the help of uh, Antonita. She's been very um, you know, generous and spent some time on Excel and created this. And this is going to be uh, for my team rolling it out and everyone on the call and the PH Alliance. I, I invite everybody to be on here. I know Seahawk and Wade are uh, very much 
um, on board, having this handed out to the team members. So it works very easily. You've got your days on the left, making contact, appointments. You know, so that's the first column is making contact. So that's the initial stuff. That's texting and calling. Then you've got your appointments, your demo, your one-on-one. -on -one. That's the next activity after. Water trials, sales, new ranks. I'm going to break them down one by one so it's really crystal clear where you're putting little numbers on. So the idea is be on offense. Wade talked about it. Instead of spending the day being in responsive mode where you're losing, what, 21, 27% of your output, why don't we go on offense in the morning? Offense looks like starting to put some little single ticks in the first and second column. That's the offense, right? If you're responding to emails, you, all of a sudden you're in a responsive mode, whereas making emails, making calls, making texts, checking appointments, all that stuff on offense. So track daily and monthly. The first column is making the contact. This is starting the uh, inviting process or the relationship building process. This can also be, um, I was out for, I was getting some mechanical work done. I met two guys in the um, showroom, um, got their cards. That to me would be a new prospect info, so I would put two slashes in my first column, making contact. This can include text and calls. So this is the first exposures. If you get a really clear that the activity in the first column needs to be the most because we're really running a funnel system because we are in sales. Um, you want to start to generate a lot of activity here. Number two column is appointments. So this is going to be you know, getting people out to demos, creating a one-on-one -on -one exposure for them, use of a third-party tool. Maybe I text the guy in the morning, they get back to me, I invite them to go watch uh, kongandemo.com. Right, so I've got one tick in the first column, one tick in the second column, and then I follow up with them. So that's the, the follow-ups, the three-way calls, that's the two to four exposures are starting to happen in this second column. Third column, how many people are you getting on water trial? That's pretty self-explanatory. Number four, sales. Customer or distributor, and there's enough space that you could actually put your name, their name in there. So you're starting to track who's coming in and where. Right? And then the new ranks. I think this is really important to see is your business growing and where so who from who. You know, the key is really getting 1As, 2As, and 3As happening. We want to produce massive amounts of growth there because the rest of the ranks take care of themselves. So you can put the name um, and the rank in there, which would be you know, super simple. Um, I have found personally, since I've been rolling out this the last two weeks for myself, kind of tracking it, builds in accountability. It's very easy being an entrepreneur to get distracted, you know, Wade did a great job in kind of expressing, you know, what, what's our pros and our cons. So building in a level of accountability personally is really supportive, but then this also allows you to share this information with your sponsor, your upline leader, and get some feedback. So start the first of the month, right? Making contact, this is a funnel system, so we want to get as much exposure in at the top so that we're popping out customers and distributors ideally at the end. Collect data from your team and share it to the upline leaders. The numbers don't lie. This is what uh, Bob Proctor said. If you're not happy with the results you're getting, check your numbers. There is some part of your activity that needs to be improved, and we can track this. Wouldn't it be awesome then to turn around to someone, you're, you're a new distributor or someone you're, you're coaching and mentoring, and ask them to give you their numbers? Looking at that number sheet, you'll be able to clearly identify where they need to be taking more action, which is usually calls and appointments. Right? So then you go back to the inviting formula. Okay, maybe this person's not feeling comfortable in that territory. Let's do some work there so that we can increase the volume in the other, lead, in the other columns. Leaders can give feedback. Commit to the process for uh, 2016. I'm just going to quickly take it back. This is what the uh, sheet's going to look like. Real simple. We'll make the PDF available um, you know, as we send out the link for this uh, for the webinar. So I really encourage everybody Talk to your leaders. Um, talk to your new distributors. Um, for me, because I work closely with eight to ten people in a really close mentorship role, they need to be on this. This is mandatory, and I need to be tracking these numbers because otherwise, you know, what's the point? We can say a lot of stuff. We can be taking action, but unless we're getting results, it's not going to really matter. So tracking the results and tracking the activity is going to be Personally, I think it could be a massive breakthrough for all of us. If we did this and committed for 2016, imagine 
you know, I, I know like we've got some big leaders on the phone on here. We've got you know Roger and his team, Richard Dietz. You know, if you guys could collect this information monthly from your team, wow, what a, what a difference that could make. So I really want to encourage you guys all to jump on board. We'd love to hear your feedback on this. Um, and from there, I'm going to swing it back to Wade and the boys for some more um, comments. Great, great stuff, Creole, and, and wonderful stuff. See how, boy, you guys were really laying it down. And, and uh, I, I'm, I'm so pumped about the Enagic Monthly Numbers Tracker because here's the thing. I'm going to share a personal story with people in Enagic, and, and I've seen this repeated over and over and over among some of the most successful distributors, some mistakes they made. And, and, and Eric Worre touched on it, and I, I've personally experienced, there will come a day in your business where checks start coming in and you don't know where they're coming from. They're, they're coming from names and places and things. You get into that 5A zone and you get some people and people get out of your downline or they get in different countries and create a false solution. Plain and simple. What happens is you start to see this, this amount of money come in and you know what the brain does? The brain has this funny thing. It goes, oh, it's all me. I'm, I'm a legend. I, I got this. I got this. Card. Money just rolling in because I am so damn amazing. Well, that's what. If, if you don't know these numbers and texts and how things are going, you got to realize there's a point where people start taking more and more of the money that are in your organization as they should, as they should, because they deserve it. They're better at it. They're good for it, and that's what they're for, right? So you got to realize. But there's a there's a sweet spot. Kind of on that rise after you've done it, you've done this work where your income expands rapidly, and what I've found, and what I've you know talking you know in the in the rooms with all the top leaders, they've all virtually all of them gone through this. You get complacent, you start believing that you're you're doing better than you want, that you, you somehow you've earned all this money, but what you're doing is you're coasting on the momentum, and you're actually in the dwindle zone and don't even know it. When you hit that stage with this sort of stuff. That's when you want to be setting that goal for the next level. Say, okay, now we're re we've got momentum. Let's just replicate this down to the team and let's have a system. And, and, and not having a system was one of my mistakes. Why, not having tracking was another mistake. These things set me back not only maybe a couple of years, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it hurt people that you know needed this information because I was ignorant. And then when I started hanging around the people that were doing the best, the people that were growing the most, the people that were uh, virtually the most successful people in all industries, they know this. And, you know, Creel brought this out. And I'll share another personal story real quick. Maybe you guys want to add to it. But, you know, the other week uh, I, did a, I did an event that I did a year before. I, I went to the same event in the same place. It was a guy that had a lot of people in an event. And in the first year I had no system. I had no tracking. I had no whatever. Guess what? You know what I got for results? Nothing, right? Somebody else is going to cover it. Somebody else is going to do it. Present in front of all these people. Didn't close that deal. Didn't get that done. It went sideways. Didn't get going on. This year, same event, same time, same crowd. Virtually the same thing. I implemented the tracking system, okay? It's only two weeks since that event, and guess what? five times the results, 5x the results in one week. And guess what? It's not stressful. It feels better. It's simpler. I'm more on point. Things are happening better. It's moving smoothly and easily. And I'm not in a stress ball freaking out as what's going on or pointing the finger at somebody else of not getting it done. As soon as, you, as, soon as this starts happening, you're in trouble. Remember. Point the finger this way, right? Give the success this way because I'll tell you what, I'm here today only because of the what I've learned from Seha, what I learned from Creel, what I learned from the people in my organization. And I'm grateful for all the great people we have in the PH Alliance because, you know, we rise up because of the efforts of everyone. And I, I'm just so grateful and lucky to have attracted such a great group of people and a great group of mentors. And these guys are my mentors. And uh, I learned so much from, from Seha and from Creel, and I'm so grateful. And you guys are really lucky to have them on your team. Guys, thanks so much for, for putting this together and, and making it happen. If you want to add to it, please do, and then we'll turn it over to questions. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Seha. I, I, thank, you. thank you, Wade. Um, 
I'm so lucky as well to, to be with you guys, but uh, talking about and thinking of all the leaders in our organization and in other cross, uh, cross teams, we see this dedication, we see this tracking, um, and we see this commitment of, of them taking action. I was on the phone with three key um, uh, leaders in my team today of the many people that I spoke with, and one's in Utah, one's in Cabo San Lucas, and the other one is in Hawaii. And, and they, they flew there. They all flew or drove there and have, have, um, have uh, on the way back, if they're driving, one of our leaders that is in Utah on the way back is stopping in, in Idaho before they return back to Washington State. They are successful because they, they took action. They took action. Uh, and that's the action that, that we, we, we see us demonstrating all the time. But it's when you start seeing your team leaders uh, do the same thing and they're teaching the same thing, it's absolutely phenomenal because you see it, you see it in the results. Like, like uh, Creel was saying, you can track it this way, that's awesome. You're, go you're going to see it before and Magic even sends you, you know, your, your, your sales for the, for the week or for the month. So take action and, and like all these leaders are doing. Awesome, Siva. You know, very similar. I, I, I've been coming to think about it. I'm either on offense or I'm playing defense. And when I get into my office in the morning, it's just like, where do I want to start? And way, you know, using Brendan Burchard stuff, it's either strategic action or responsive. And I feel like a lot of the times I am responding to other people's urgency, which is not important to me, rather than responding to my own urgency, which is important to me. And I get way too caught up in other people's emails dropping by, phone calls that are not related to what I need to be focused on. And in the morning when I get into work from 9 to 1, I need to be on offense. And that activity can be tracked in the first column so that I can look in the afternoon and look back and be like, great, I've already set myself up for a productive day. Now I can start to do some of the responsive stuff. But if I get into that mode in the beginning, it's hard to turn around the energy into the afternoon. And, and this is me nine years into um, building a network marketing business. The first four years I did okay, but I spent a lot of time distracted, avoidance, all this behavior, and I've had to learn and be committed to being a home entrepreneur. And it's not easy, everybody. So you know, anyone who's been successful will explain that's not easy. It takes time to develop that skill set. But if I had my own accountability built in earlier, I think I could have done it faster. And I think the tracking the numbers gives me that leverage so that I can see during you know the beginning of the month, oh, I'm really excited, whereas I, am I fading out towards the end of the month? What's happening? What activity am I picking it up at the end of the week when really I should pick it up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, should be big days, and then chill out a little bit on the weekend, you know, whatever that rhythm is going to be for yourself. So I encourage you guys to get on board, try this out, give us feedback, you know, speak to your sponsor, upline around it, let us know, maybe we can improve it, maybe we can fix it up a little bit, um, you know, just let, let's see what happens. And let's grow it. Absolutely, guys. It's, it, uh, that's just, just nothing but gold from you guys. And uh, so, so appreciative to have you on there. And, and, and just remember, guys, um, those seven areas, make sure that you're planning each one of those areas. One of the great things that I learned from Siha is just how balanced he put together all the components of life. He's got a family life. He's got his friend's life. He's got his business life. He's got his spiritual practice. He's got his health practice, you know. And, 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 and he wasn't all perfect on all these when he started, but he, he, he kept reevaluating and said, you know what, I need to get my health better. You know what, I need to spend more time with my family. And then he was working hard. He was like, I need, and my, his big thing is take a month off in the summer. That's his rejuvenation, recharging, reflecting time. And, he, and I've learned a lot from him because I was one of these guys that want to be on all the time, just, just keep, keep just keep hammering away. But you know what? That doesn't work. The idea here is to build total balance, total wellness, a holistic something where people will magnetically attract it to you. And, and the good news is, is when you incorporate that, all of a sudden people are asking you about what you're doing. People are saying, well, how do you have this lifestyle? How is it that you're able to travel around the world? Like, like how, how come I saw you on Facebook? And you know, last week you're in San Francisco, and the week before that you're in Vegas, and the week before that you're in Hawaii, and then you're in Vancouver. Like, how's that possible? You go, well, it's what I'm doing. You know, I can show you too. And everything changes at a certain point when you become that. And uh, it's a great thing. And, and these guys have done it. And we're going to take it to the next level. And by the way, just so you know, 
since we've been incorporating the practices that we took over these six, these last six weeks, I don't know you both, you guys, but I know one thing: it's working because last month was the best quarter. The last quarter has been the best quarter we've had in a magic in the, in the PH Alliance. That's for sure. So uh, I thank you all for your efforts and continue on because the the thing is this: this is about your business. And as you take these efforts, you're going to make more money and influence more people and have more fun than you can possibly imagine. So uh, let's let's go to some questions. We have questions here. Let's let's open up the thing. We've got uh, we got Roger. He's just he, Roger Gadget just saying BC dude. I don't know if that's a question, but Roger, we love you. Your favorite story in Enagic. The guy's got Enagic tattooed on his arm, change your wire, change your life with here and our Shiro. I mean, that's a mission. That is a mission, folks. And uh, what a wonderful story, him and Sabine and Gowan and the whole family. I, I, I mean, it brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. And I, 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 you know, they do amazing presentations. If you guys can get out to see Roger and Sabine, uh, when yeah. they will, they will teach you more than than anybody can seriously they are amazing to see live get out there and see them if you can yeah absolutely and um, you know and more importantly uh, I don't want to add to this is when you come to your upline for you know if you come talk to us whatever these numbers really helps us if you've done an, a, an inventory we talked about the seven areas and then we talked about the five aspects of your performance you know Brendan Burchard stuff if you start evaluating those areas, guess what? Now we can give you the tools, the techniques, the, the coaching, the teaching, the, the assistance that you need to, to blow things up. And guess what? None of us are good at all of them. None of us are perfect in all of them. In fact, I, I remember doing the Eric Worre 7. How did you rate yourself? I was like 40. 40 out of 70. I mean, that, 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 that's like a fail in school and I've got a wonderful business with a lot of great people in it so you can you can suck as bad as me and do great and and I, I, what really was exciting about that for me is I got wow I, I, I I'm not that good I, I, I got to go to the next level and I knew where I needed to go to the next level and then I was able to incorporate these guys Siha and Creel to help me go to the next level because they're good at skills that I'm not and that's what the beauty of an adjic is. We're one family, one mission. We're changing lives around the world, and uh, you know, we love you. What more can we say? We just love it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I see, yeah, it's awesome. I see another huge leader on, in my organization here, uh, Richard Dietz, who is my mentor at 19 years old. So I owe a lot of my business uh, building to Rich, and he did build one of the fastest teams in my organization. Uh, climbing up the ranks and continue him and uh, Rochelle and their and their son traveling all over the world doing this from Mexico. They're in California right now. So I, I just want to say thank you very much, Rich, Rochelle, and Sterling. Uh, you guys are family for 25 years, and and you know not Rich when I shared with him the the water uh, business that I was going to do in 2008. His words to me, quote unquote, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Uh, and now, you know, literally, he is my luck. So thank you um, to the Dietz family. I see you guys online. Yeah, it's it's great having you guys all online. And you want to add anything, Creel? You know, I it's it's it just keeps getting better and better. You know, I, you're in Panama. We're doing this. We're we've got big plans for 2016 moving onward. You know, I, I think we just we we mentioned about this. It's about making the commitment. You know, and just being diligent in those efforts and showing our new people how to do that and teaching the skill set um, and just follow through, follow through because we got a great program. We got a great organization. We've got great support. Uh, everything's here to, for our success and, and wealth formula to happen for anybody who's, who's going to stick around and work hard to get it. So, you know, that's, that's the overall, that's the mission that we're on is supporting people and it can be working for everybody. So being on the webinars is part of that step, you know, get as much exposure to the message and to teachings and trainings as possible, and then take action and track your results, and then do the feedback loop. Right. 
uh, I want to thank you guys for helping my teams because I, I, I know that Creel, you get a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls from my team. Wade, of course, you're getting a lot of phone calls and, and, and emails from the team and texts and stuff like that. I want to thank you guys personally because they've come to me after the fact that, hey, Creel's really helped me out in this situation or Wade's really helped me out in this situation. So I really want to uh, thank you guys for that. At the same token, I'm glad that I'm able to give back uh, to your team as well. You know, speaking with uh, Tara in Colorado or, you know, your, your um, Nelson group or whatnot, you know what, that's what we're here to do. That's this PH Alliance at its best. And uh, I, I didn't want to leave that out. I keep forgetting to thank you guys for, for being there when I can't be. So thank you. Awesome. So um, I guess we don't have a lot of questions tonight. I mean, it comes down to Nagic monthly trackers. And sometimes when you first see this, you might feel intimidated. You might feel that, oh, man, I don't know about this. Because guess what? The tracker is going to get you busted at first. But I'm going to mm -hmm. share something with you. When you start tracking your numbers and start doing the work, it's amazing. You start to realize this business actually works. If you go back to week one, you want those 25 texts going out. You talk about what Seahaw was talking about at the system. Buy your machine. Get a health success center. Get a health success center website, the $20 site that has the, the guy on the front, the doctor that gives you the piece. It does, the, it does the process for you, and it tracks where they are in the videos. You know where that guy is. You plug this into the numbers tracker. Guess what? You send 25 texts. You get these people to review. 20, you send 25 people, or, or let's say 10 people go to this. You know where they are. You get with your upline and say, hey, I got four or five people that, that, that they got questions for me. Guess what? You're going to get some attention. You're going to close some sales. You're going to get some people on some water trials. And you know what? All you did was send some text, send some skills. So then you start promoting for the events. And let me tell you about an event coming up. We got Hawaii coming up in April. Now, we've been talking, and we are going to offer some very, very special things. We are building for Hawaii. We had such a great time. If you look back, we had the videos in there. We were on Waikiki Beach. It was one of the best events that we've ever had. We're looking to bring 100 people to this event. We're going to have a collection of PH Alliancers inside of Enagic at this event. We're going to overwhelm Waikiki Beach. I'm excited about it. We are going to have just the best time ever. We want you to be there. It was such a great time. You know, we were, sitting on the, we're standing on the beach doing this and we're going, guys, we, we've got to get the whole team here. This is something that you can plan a vacation around. This is something you can have a lot of fun. You can bring the whole family. Um, we're going to do some very, very special things. So I'm just going to share that. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to what we're going to promote, but you do not want to miss this. You don't want to miss what we're going to be talking about. So get everybody you can on the webinars each week because live is better. Live gets you pumped up. It's Monday nights. We want you going. We've got a month left till Christmas. You know, we're going to go to the December 15th. We're going to take a couple weeks off for Christmas, and then we're coming back in the new year, going hard. So. All out massive action. We're almost there. We're pressing to Christmas. We want to make this the best Christmas ever. We want to put a we want to put some machines in people's stockings. We want to put some cash in your bank accounts so you can buy some Christmas presents. You know, have a big spread, blow it all out, get the family like like Seahaw's got here with his kids involved. We're excited. Thank you so much. Guys, anything else you want to add? You know what, way before you close it, which was great, a couple of people decided to jump in, ask some questions. So let's just I can quickly just fire through this. Let's see, Oviv, uh, what are your favorite ways to prospect and how do you follow up, um, offer the opportunity again to someone who has said no, not now? Honestly, it's about building relationships and it's asking questions. Get good at asking questions. If they give you an answer, think of the next question to ask them. This can be done when you're just meeting people out and about or if you're kind of getting back together with somebody. Take the agenda away and ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, and eventually there's going to be an opening. So the way you prospect is the way, how do you build relationships, how do you get to know someone? You know, and I can do that, it's casual out in the world, or I'm more focused being like, look, I want to connect to a bunch of people that I haven't for a while, so what's the first step there? Well, it might take several steps before I, I'm in the follow-up stage, I'm just building that relationship. How do I follow up? Well, depending on what the initial contact was, that the follow-up kind of presents that. 
Um, it will either be a, a, a text message, just, hey, did you get the information I sent you? Um, you know, uh, are we, I always try to follow the Eric Worre inviting formula to a T. I realize when I do it right, I follow up 80% and it's easy. When I do it wrong, I'm only getting a response of 5 to 10. So for me, I'm like, how do I follow up? I follow up with how I invite it. If I did the invitation correctly, the follow-up is just a natural procedure from it. The follow-up is, oh, we've already agreed what time I'm going to call you after you're looking at the material that you said you would, and it's going to be at this phone number which you gave to me. So the follow-up is just me following through with my invitation. So it all comes down to learning the invitation. If finding prospects and, and, and the inviting, if you do those two things, everything else is going to take care of itself. If you're finding you're having a hard time following up, that means to me that your inviting formula is needs tweaking. You're, you're, it's not doing it correctly because if you do it right, the follow up is just easy, you know. Um, and if they say not now, then no problem. And maybe it's not now, you know. So I would follow up with them three, six, twelve months down the road, checking in and being like, hey, I just want to revisit. You know, last time we we chatted, you said it wasn't for you. Wondering if it's a better time for you now. That could be a phone call. That could be a friendly text. You know, I send those out every three, six months to certain people, and I've had. 20% of them over time, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, it is the right time for me. I want to get some more information right now or like our finances are good. So committing and having a, a strategic way to follow up, Oviva, I think is like really key. You know, these people need to be filed into the appropriate, uh, however you're tracking it, appropriate sheets of paper with the names like follow up in three, six months. Um, and I track them all on, on boards in my office. Uh, and Amanda, you had a great question. Um, if I have a distributor who says they want to do the business, but they don't make it to events, what do I say to them, or how do I inspire them to get going? Maybe one of you guys would like to answer that one. Before I do, I want to add one thing to the inviting thing, and I think it's a mistake that a lot of Enagic distributors do, and that is that they fire hose people with the water tell them it's the greatest thing for the slice bread and, and the shields go up, or they, they talk about the business in a way that they, they, the number one subject that people want to talk about is themselves. Like Creel said, ask questions before you give them the goods. I know it's, we got an exciting product that everybody needs, but not everybody's ready to hear it. They need to talk about them, and you want to get them asking about what's going on in your life. That's the, called the reciprocity, okay, and that's a, a big aspect of persuasion. So. Um, Going back to the question that we have here, if you have a distributor who says they want to do the business but they don't make it to events, what do I say to them or how do I inspire them to get going? Well, you know, it depends. It depends. You've got to understand when you lay the foundation down, there's three things that we do. We share the water, we share the business, we promote events. And you need to establish that with the person right off the bat. They say, well, how does this business work? We share the water, we share the business, we promote events. If you do those three things consistently, you get to have a successful business. If you don't do those things, you don't have a successful business. So you bring it down to the one, two, three program, and that's it. And, and say, everybody's singing, as Danny D. McCauley says, everybody's singing from the same hymn book. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's going to events. They're, 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 and some people can't make it to a lot of events, maybe because of financial reasons or whatever, but usually they can make it to one and say, okay, you didn't make this one. What is one that you can commit to? And pick them up and take them. Go with them. Make it easy for them to show up to the first one. Make it easy. Are you, uh, can I add on to something like that? I can't see the question, so can you read it to me one more time and then I'll if, if I have a distributor who says they want to do the business but they don't make it to events, what do I say to them and how do I inspire them to get going? Okay, so I heard some key things. You have somebody who's inspired to do the business but hasn't made the event. And it, it, again, Wade and Creel, there, there are so many scenarios and so many uh, ways that we can answer this. Um, but what I would say, you, you already feel that they, they want to do the business, so let's move the sale forward. Let's assume the fit sale forward. They, ha they don't need to come out to the event. Let's, they've already said they want to do the business, so how, how do we do this business, guys? We sign them up. So let's sign them up. 
for some reason you're telling me they want to do the business. Great. Let's can I can I take a can I uh, take a look at your driver's license so we make sure that the machine gets sent to the right address and which credit card would you like to put that on? Take that information, place the order. Take them to the event after they've gotten their machine. So for me, that answer, that's how I would treat that 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 person or that 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 uh, prospect is that they've already told me, they've already given me this feeling that they want to do the business, uh, they just can't make it out of the event, that's fine. Let's get you signed up and I'm going to drive you to the next event. Matter of fact, it's a $45 cost for the, for the Super Saturday, whatever it is, I got you. Okay, so just move it forward. Uh, for me, I, I think the, the question was uh, uh, for Amanda, if you have the distributor who's already bought and in and they want to, but they're not showing up for events, I, I would just oh, call. Okay. Call that person, Amanda, and I, I, I'd say, you know, you only have so much. I only have so much time. You only have so much time. So if you want to call and just be have a real open conversation, being like, hey, my goal is to work with people who want to change their life, improve their health, and be successful in this business. I thought that was you because you told me you were interested, and but I haven't seen you doing that. Is there something that you need help with in order to make this happen, or have your priorities change and you no longer want to do this because it's either one or two things one they don't have the skills they're feeling scared about taking the action or they've decided that they're not going to do it which if they're not going to do it cool but then you can then let go of that expectation and you can say hey the door is going to be open for you I'm ready to get to work for you in your business but I'm not going to do it for you but with you kind of thing and but maybe they're just like hey you know what I'm a little bit scared. I need to know what the next step is for me, which is really like, okay, let's go back to the inviting formula so that you can maybe come to the events and bring someone with you. So I would just have an honest conversation there because the reality is people are going to fade in and out at different times, but as a leader, you only have so much time committed to it. Commit that energy to the people that are moving, right? Our job for me is not so much to motivate. You know, people's why is what motivates them, and my job is to get them clear on their why, but my job is not motivation. I'm going to go work with the people who are self-motivated because that's going to be the most fun in your business. Yeah, it, the inspiration business doesn't pay well. Um, the asking questions business does, and it comes down to finding out what's going on in that person's life and, and showing that you care but showing that you care enough to, to, to break it down for them and say, these, these are what it takes to be successful, can you commit to that? Are you willing to do it? Is there some obstacle that's holding you back? Um, you know, what's your dreams? What's your goals? Are you reaching them in the way that you're doing? And I, I have listened to Siha and Creel in, 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 in hundreds of demonstrations asking prospects those questions. And at the end of the day, the best people in this business, they're going to do it with or without you. You know, you got to understand that if you're if you're constantly inviting people who say they want to do things and they can't show up for their own lives, you, you, you need to sponsor up. And what I mean by sponsoring up, you need to start talking to people that you're not comfortable talking with right now. You need to start moving into the next level of somebody that you might look up to, that you might be surprised that they would do this type of business. You don't know. You don't know. And, you know, there's nothing, you know, how you, well, I think it was uh, Harv Ecker says, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I always love that statement. And one of the things that I notice about people who are really growing and winning in this business, they're going to do it, they're just going to do it, they're going to learn it, they're going to, they, they don't, they're going to mess up, they don't care, they're going to try again, they're going to blow things up. They're just not going to stop because their why is so powerful. So find out that why and remind them about it and watch how your business changes. Awesome. So I think with that, um, someone said, what is a sales CD? I'm not sure what they mean by that question. It means C is for customer, D is for distributor. When you make a sale, you put a tick in that column and you put their name beside it so you can track it. Okay, great. Thank, thank you for clarifying that. I, I guess it was on the Magic Tracker. So, um, looks like that we got everybody. Uh, thank you. Uh, lots of love to you, Amanda. Uh, we love you too. And, uh, you know, hey guys, this is an opportunity 
you know, for live for asking us the direct questions. We love questions. We want to help. We're in a position sometimes where we can't be there directly, we can't be there physically, or there's only so much time. So if you've got a burning question or someone in this thing, get them on the call and get their question in here to the PH Alliance webinar because that way we can you know, break it down for you and help you grow and also learn where we need to focus the next level of teaching for the group on whole. Because if there's questions in your organization, there's questions in all our organizations. And we want to be there for you. We love you. We care about you. We're so happy you're on the team. I'm so proud of everybody making the efforts. I love seeing how people grow. I see Shelly uh, is on the line, you know, the, the, the mother of the Bellingham group who takes care of everybody and all these team people. Love it. It's so great to see everybody grow. I see to see families. I see people get inspired. I see people go to that next level. I mean, I'm excited about where the future's going. I'm excited about where things are going. I love where the PH Alliance. We love you all, and uh, we'll see you on the call next week. Awesome. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Have an awesome week.